Alright, welcome guys, Mike Slane, Household Easy. This is a training video to show you guys how to do photos of a property. So basically when you guys are out there doing uh, property walkthroughs or meeting with sellers potentially, what pictures we want you to take. Uh, it's pretty important because this is how we're going to reevaluate and determine repairs as well as market the properties once we get them under contract. So first things first, you're probably going to use your camera phone uh, on it. You can see right now, I'm probably about 15 feet from the house, so when I look at it, I'm not going to get the whole house in the, uh, in the camera itself. So I'm actually going to walk out across the street. So look both ways, make sure you don't get hit by a car. You also want to make sure you get probably two sides of the house. So on my camera right now, I see the front of the house and the side of the house. I'm going to take that picture. Next thing, we're going to walk around. I always like to try to get the entire outside of the house and then go to the inside. It makes it easier when you're finished for uh, to upload the pictures. It makes it more continuous so that you know what you're doing. All right, so follow us here to the back. So this one, obviously a lot of cars in the driveway. We're not necessarily gonna be able to get a good shot of this side of the house, but that's all right. So we'll just keep on walking all the way around. Okay, now and oftentimes you'll come here to the back and there's a fence if you can't get in say there's a a, a dog that's gonna bite you you're gonna have to go ahead and just kind of lean over and get as good of a shot as you can of the, of the back of the house and you're gonna want to try to get a shot of that air conditioner as well now this is my house and these are my dogs so we're gonna go ahead and walk in come on Henry back in dogs Henry here So further going through, um, we're going to do the same thing we do with the front of the house. We're going to walk all the way out to the edge of the backyard so we can get a good shot of the back of the house. If you can, if there's a hill or an elevation, you're going to want to get up higher so you can see a decent shot of the roof as well to help us determine the, lot, the roof life. Obviously this backyard slopes down so that's not going to help us. On the other side of the property on the front, it was a little bit higher so that might be an opportunity to do that. I always take a picture of the AC unit uh, to make sure it's there again because they're not always there so you want to make sure you do that the other thing on the outside of the house when you're looking around you're gonna to want to walk the perimeter and if you see any defects you're gonna to want to go ahead and uh, take a picture of those as well so you want pictures from far away as well as close-ups of any defects you find on the exterior of the house go ahead and pause it okay the other thing I wanted to point out is when I'm at a house and I'm doing the exterior photos Sometimes you're going to be walking through five, six houses a day. So I'll take a picture of the address that's on the house. If it's not on the house, it might be on the mailbox. So you want to grab a picture of that as well. That's going to help you identify which property you're in when you go back and look at your pictures later. All right, so let's go inside the house. All right, so when you get into the house, uh, obviously you're going to want to take a picture of every room. Uh, since we're probably using our camera phones, they aren't the best at doing wide angles. So always try to stand back in the corner, and I like to try to do them uh, landscape instead of portrait. You're going to get a much better uh, picture of the room. If you have to, go ahead and take a second one from another angle. This is going to help you. Uh, and again, do that in, in the room. Do one from two corners next to each other, not opposite corners. It's much easier to follow that way. Same thing, so we're kind of walking through. That was the family room here. Uh, I honestly, when I walk through the house, this one, I probably would turn right here and take a picture of this doorway too so that I can see that that is right off of the family room. It's going to help me note that. And I'm going to go ahead and do my two pictures in here as well. You can do, you'll notice what I just did there. Just kind of stand there with an upright one, grab a picture of that. But I'm going to encourage you to go into every room. And again, when the house is occupied, it's more uncomfortable. When it's vacant, go into every room and look, look at every door. You're going to need to open every door. Reason being, I've walked through houses and I thought it was a three bedroom, one bath. It was a three bedroom, two bath. You're gonna miss bathroom, so open every door as you walk through a house. <coughs> uh, the kitchen, same thing as all the other rooms. You're gonna grab a couple pictures of each. I'm gonna ask you all to go under the, the sink, take a picture under here, because we're gonna to wanna to know if there's a garbage disposal or not more important for the rentals because we're going to take them out, uh, but you're also going to notice water damage if there's any leaking. 
to take a picture underneath the sinks as well. Walking back through, let's look at the bathroom. This is going to get a little bit tight. When you're in the bathroom, you need to take a picture of all the fixtures. So, I mean, you try to try your best, and you're probably going to stand out of the bathroom, take a shot in. And you can see Kyle's even struggling there to record because it's just difficult with these uh, devices. But again, he's got a pretty good shot, so that's probably a decent picture of the bathroom. Next, you're going to want to zoom in on the shower and the shower head, make sure they're both in place. And you can tap on the wall. It's always a good idea to, when you're walking through. If you hear any hollowness, that's an indication that there's water leakage and that wall's going to need to be replaced as well. So that's something kind of, kind of uh, good to know. Uh, other pictures that you're going to need to grab. So bedrooms, again, we're just going to go through both uh, two angles in each room. Open every door, make sure there's not a bathroom you're going to miss. And then we're going to head down to the basement. But not least, we absolutely have to get a picture of our water heater and our central air. So this one is tucked away like most of them are, and you almost never can get into them easily. So what I do, uh, if you don't have a flashlight, you're going to have to turn your camera off, use your phone as a flashlight, get in there and make sure you get a picture of the front of your water heater, and you're going to have to go into this room back here and get as good of a picture as you can of the furnace down here. All right, so when you're in the basement, the basement is where there's a lot of good stuff and you're gonna to have to start getting familiar with it. So in this house, we're gonna walk over here. Uh, one of the first things we wanna look at is the electric panel. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to note what kind it is. There's a few kinds, Federal, Pacific, and, uh, oh shoot, what's the other one? Sounds like a railroad. Those are bad, they need to be replaced, unfortunately. Grab a picture of the box when it's open uh, and when it's closed because we'll be able to tell if it's a box that needs to be replaced or not. Another thing to look for in the electric panel, uh, you'll see a whole bunch of new wiring in this one. Kyle, come over here and zoom in. This is called knob and tube wiring right here, this one that my phone is next to. This is something you're going to want to look out for. It's wiring that needs to be replaced. This is not acceptable, not up to code, so that's going to be several thousand dollars. So again, knob and tube, you've got to keep your eye out when you're in the basement. Uh, here's another uh, there's the what we're looking for. So you'll see a whole bunch of funky, funky stuff up there. So again, that's the electric panel. Make sure you get a good shot of that. Uh, you're going to want to walk around the whole basement, and what you're going to look for is evidence of water. Obviously, you're going to smell it. Uh, this basement does have water leakage issues, so here's something that you're going to note over here. Uh, you look at this window, you can see it's been patched in the past. And you can see that there still is some active water leaking. Uh, you can see the paint is loose. So that's something you're, we're going to need to address. Uh, the next thing you want to find is your gas and your uh, water meters. I always take a picture just to make sure that they're there. So we're going to grab a picture of that one and that one as well. All right, next up in the basement, and it was over where we started. Is the laundry room. So again, we want to know if there's washer dryer hookups. Some houses don't have them or they're not down here. So again, you want to grab a picture of the laundry facility. Uh, just get a picture of the washer dryer hookup and the electric so that we know they're there. Uh, the more that you have in each photo, the better. Another thing you can look for in this house, this is a great example of one where there's water leaking in or there's evidence of water penetrating. You can see this has been putty over as well and there's some dirt on the floor underneath where the water is actually uh, into the house. So you want to get pictures of all that stuff as well. If you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, one of the lead buyers.